air is coming out, but mechanically, we're starting a breath. Now, a patient might even be doing that. In an acute asthma attack, I won't rub it in, but in an acute asthma attack, what is the most uh, typical finding? Atelectasis or hyperinflation? hyperinflation? Sorry to rub it in, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Why is he air trapping? We. And you hear that and you go, okay, this ain't working. All right. I'm having a bad day. All right. Now you're stuck. You are stuck, right? Because you want to give enough breaths, right? But you want them to stop wheezing somewhere in their expiratory phase. And you're caught between a rock and another rock, okay? <laughs> and the two rocks you're caught in between is generating enough minute volume and giving him enough time to exhale. Because the two are counter counterproductive, right? The two things work against each other, right? The two things work against each other. All right. Okay, so let's make some adjustments. Tidal volume. Now this tidal volume, because he's plastic and things ain't working, right? How am I going to get, I, okay, I look at my minute volume and it's not right, but I want to keep my rate at 10. And I look at my tidal volume and it's not right and I want to add tidal volume. So, so the game plan now is to me add tidal volume. Is your rate, is your... We've got to do something. Increase your, your minute volume. Increase my, oh, okay. Don't work. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, okay. So I got to increase my tidal volume. How am I going to increase my, okay. Change my IPAP and my EPAP. Yeah. Okay, what should I change it to? Um, do you want more, you said? What do you want? I want bigger. More is bigger. So 12 over 15. Yeah. 12 over what? Not 15. Well, no, say 12 over 7. 12, uh, 12, over, 12 six. over 6. 12 over 6. Okay. Carl said 12 over 8. All right. So what was my change in pressure before I did that? 5. 5. Yeah. What's my change in pressure six. now? 6. 6. Okay. I probably would have not have changed the EPAP. I would have said, I like my EPAP, so I just want more tidal volume, and I got a little more tidal volume, right? But because of my delta P, we call it delta P. Keep the net for the rest of your life. Delta P is the difference from this to this, okay? I'm going to drop that, put that in there, I'll keep that. Okay, so what's my delta P now? Seven. So from the bottom to the top, the pressure is seven. Okay, so that's my ventilation. And I got more ventilation. And what what should I expect on my blood gas? What? An improved pH. <laughs> but, but more, but more uh, precisely. Decrease CO2. Decrease CO2. Perfect. Okay. Now we're generating more tidal volume. We still got a rate of 10, but our minute volume went up, therefore we've got a good tidal volume. So how do I know I got a good tidal volume? What I need a number. What is a good tidal volume for? 600? 600? Depending on the body, the body weight. Depends on the body weight. Body weight. And our age, right? Age, body weight, height. Okay. Ideal body weight. Ideal body weight. Ideal. Okay. IBW. IBW. Okay. What we want is five to seven mLs per kilogram of ideal body weight. Because our patients might not have ideal body weight. A lot of our patients uh, have issues, obesity issues. And I see a lot of people out there can't recognize that. And the weight factor doesn't play a part in it because of the lung size? Is that just because lungs are typically yeah, the same size? Yeah, body weight. Unfortunately, unfortunately, ideal body weight is a terrible tool to use because there's lots of debate around which is ideal body weight. Right. What would be better? 
But better, we don't have better because we're not that smart. Gender and height. <laughs> uh, if, if it was up to me, we would have charts that had gender and height. We'd live with those, and I think we do a better job at this. But we don't. So. Did they use the BMI for the ideal body weight? There's some charts out there and stuff, and uh, a lot of debate. But that's what we use. So for the probably, but you know, for your practice, your clinicals, your testing, that's the way it's going to be. Is, is, it, is it the best way to do it? I truly, truly don't like it because you've, we, we've, we've used so much better predictors in the pulmonary functions world than we do in the mechanical ventilation world. It's a shame. It's a shame. Okay, so we have that. All right, so why don't we just leave that at five? Let's just leave that EPAP at five. Everybody gets five. Okay, you got five, you got five, you got five, okay? Why is that probably not the case? What does that do? Look at that. There, you can see it. Not everybody needs a long exit No, it's not time. Is that time? That's volume. Is that volume? That's pressure. That's pressure. Okay? Why do we make that adjustable? Because some people, like, you might be putting way too much air in their lungs, and their lungs probably take so much. Some people need more pressure in order to stent their lungs open. Stent their lungs open. Okay? So this is a baseline pressure to improve. What do you think we're trying to open them up? Open up. And what do we call it? If they're closed up, what do we call it? Starts with an A. Atelectasis. Okay. Now that's the right answer. See how they can growing in? Now that's the We have a patient with atelectasis. So what's going to improve our air trapping? Time. He's a, he's a wonderful, e, here now we can, we can control E. We can make it longer and shorter to help with air trapping, but now we can make it higher and lower to help with atelectasis. Now we got a therapeutic tool right here, right in the hands of somebody who's paying attention, who knows what they're doing. This is a therapeutic tool. So this is going to increase it comes in three letters, and the last letter is C. FRC. FRC. <laughs> and what happens in FRC? <laughs> Respiration, right? That, that's, that's the. That, that's, <laughs> huh? What, what are you showing us? <laughs> it says it on your arm. Okay. Oh, the tattoo? Respiration, okay? So now I can improve respiration by opening up FRC and making more AC units available, so more places for my FiO2 to go and improve my AA gradient. So this is a wonderful therapeutic tool, a wonderful therapeutic tool. So I can oxygenate and ventilate. And I can, and I can hopefully, if I can, if, if my patient's disease state cooperates, actually manipulate my ABG by changing stuff. Question. So the EPAP, you would change that based off of how much pressure someone needs to stent their lung or to stent the alveoli open. That's when you That's what, yeah, when, when I think I have a wide AA gradient, I'm not hacking up on 100%, EPAP of 5, my SAT's 88. I think I'm ventilating. But obviously, I'm not oxygenating. Why am I not oxygenating? I have a poor FRC. I don't have a good fun. My FRC is not functioning the way I want it. I want that oxygen to get into the blood. So I'm going to bring up my EPAP. But I got to be careful when I bring up my EPAP. Without changing my IPAP, what happens to my tidal volume? It goes down. Right? Because now my driving pressures are close together. So I have to also. So if I brought that to 10, and I still wanted a delta P of 7, what do I need to set? What do I need to set my IPAP at? 17. I still get the delta P of 7. I still get the same drive. I probably will get the same tidal volume. I might improve compliance by using an EPAP, because as I increase FRC, that I might uh, also improve lung compliance so that delta P of 7 might even give me more tidal volume because I'm making the lungs better. 
when you get to TSI, you guys all been spend a little time down there, you'll see we use a ventilator mode called Bivent. And that Bivent is an FRC recruiting monster. It is a wonderful mode. And the more I've used it, and I've been using it now um, almost 10 years, uh, it has really 